Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. We will be starting the reveal of Nissan GTR Nismo 2022 shortly. I am your MC today, Megumi Sato. Given the pandemic, we are organizing the session in a digital format. The presenters are not wearing masks, but will be taking social distancing along with other preventive measures. We will be starting shortly.
Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Thank you for joining the unveiling event of Nissan GTR 2022 model. I am Megumi Sato, your MC today. We are revealing the Nissan GTR 2022 model, and you will hear about the details of this attractive model in the talk session involving the product planner, designer, and engineer who are responsible for the car. Given the pandemic, we are organizing the session in the digital format. The presenters are not wearing masks, but will be taking social distancing along with other preventive measures. Thank you for waiting. This is the Nissan GTR 2022 model. The Nissan GTR 2022 model is now unveiled. How do you like it? I would like to ask Tamura san, the product planner for the car, to give us more details. Tamura san, the floor is yours. Yes. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you for watching today. I am Hiroshi Tamura, product planner for GTR and Z Car. We have finally unveiled the GTR 2022 model. I am so excited to present many attractive aspects of this model. Tamura san, thank you. Yes, thank you. Would you start by describing the concept of the GTR, please? Sure. Nissan GTR is based on the concept of pursuing the ultimate driving pleasure. We stay true to the belief since the birth of the GTR. This is about ultimate driving pleasure. How driving is pleasant. This has started since R33. And what do you call it? Um, the driving performance or the behavior of the cars are embedded effectively. For example, this is what we have been consistently saying. GT is on the vertical axis. On the horizontal axis, we have an R. And in the middle, we have GTR. That's how we've positioned it. And the vertical axis, GT stands for Gran Turismo. You want to go far, long distance, at high speed. Well, on the Japanese roads, there are regulations to limit speed, of course, but from time to time, you can go to an autobahn and there are unlimited speed is allowed. When you are driving at 300 kilometers per hour, but still you can enjoy conversation with the passenger beside you. This is a kind of Gran Turismo. This is the behavior of the car. And on the other hand, it's an R. It's about racing field, like Nismo. This is a Nissan's technology which we express. The performance, that's what we are expressing. And in the middle, we have GTR. So in order to make you enjoy driving, we are building this car. And this is also embedded in this new model. By the way, um, this premium edition or track edition, we put these names. At the end of the day, it's all about how to, um, how to make sure the tires are 
in contact with the ground or the cars are driving through the air. This is about reconciling everything. And I would like to draw your attention to this point. In the past, maybe you have heard about it. The colors, look at the body colors and interior colors. Colors are expressing these two axes. And, and these are the two colors that I want to present in details. Well, of course, uh, people may be attracted to the fact that we are reducing the weight and other technicalities, but because we have two great leaders here with us, I'm, I'm going to stop here, in fact, and I want these two gentlemen to provide further details. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tamuna-san. Later. Uh, well, I would like to invite the two gentlemen to the floor. And Tamuna-san, these cars on the stage, T-Spec, this name, it's named T-Spec. Does this T-Spec, according to rumor, rumor, I heard that this is a T for Tamuda-san. I heard that the name T-Spec comes from your name, Tamuda-san. Is this true? In the rehearsal round through, I wanted to say no, but I can say yes. I was feeling I should say yes to that question, but I will be very serious here. This, the name T-Spec comes from TM-Spec, because originally I, we thought of naming it as a TM rather than T-Spec. And TM, this was used in Nissan in the past. We used to use two codes, two alphabets which is an engineering code name, a secret code for the vehicle while we developed this. And this was TM. We put TM for this R35 because it was for a trend maker or trend making. It's about driving the trend. It's a milestone of the new trend. That's why it's a trend maker. And the other notion is hardware. GTR is about on firmly gripping the road surface four wheels putting a strong traction distraction master trend maker trend maker and tra traction master are what tm stands for and that's why we call it t-spec so it's not my name by the way so don't take me wrong okay thank you very much thank you for waiting i'm sure you're looking forward to this presentation in addition to Tamuna-san, we would like to invite great guests with us. Hearing about the concept of GTR and T-Spec, what do you think about the story given? Now, I would like to provide further details on T-Spec so that you know how attractive this. So in addition, Tamura-san, we are inviting Yamaguchi-san in charge of color designing and Kawaguchi-san who engineered the car to join the conversation. Yamaguchi-san, Kawaguchi-san, please come up to the stage. Thank you, gentlemen. Kawaguchi-san, would you please make your self-introduction? Yes, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am engineer responsible for GTR, Chief Vehicle Engineer. Today, I'm happy to talk about the attractive aspects of GTR 2022 Model T-Spec. Thank you, Kawaguchi-san. Now, I would like to ask Yamaguchi-san in charge of color designer. Please make your intro self-introduction. Yes, I belong to global design team. I'm in charge of color designing. My name is Yamaguchi. As Tamura-san said, I would like to provide you a lot of details about the colors. Thank you, Yamaguchi-san. I heard that this is the first time for you to appear in this model reveal event. Yes, I asked him to appear because for a long time, a color is, has been an important factor. So you have been dealing with him for years? Yes. 
or like 20 years or 30 years I have been working with you right so I'm looking forward to hear about more stories about the old times as well so please take your seats gentlemen so let us ask more about t specs starting with the most visible aspect of the car which is body color Yamaguchi-san Earlier, Tambura-san was talking about trend maker, which is about a philosophy of driving the trend. And you are offering two new colors for the T-Spec following the spirit. First, would you elaborate on midnight purple? As well as another color, which is millennium jade. These are the two colors. Some of you may feel oh that's the color I know so how did you come up with these two colors yes as you said we are offering two new colors for 2022 model T spec and if you are a fan of GTR you may have noticed that the midnight purple and millennium jade are the colors that pay homage to the colors that were available for the second generation R33 and R34 today I oversee the entire color designing, but when we are were the engineering R33 and R34, I was involved at the working level. So I was actually involved in developing the original colors. And when we were engineering Midnight Purple, when this was planned as a dedicated cover for R33, it was about the strong impact, fierceness, or strong presence of GTR. These were the key words. And initially, we were developing colors based on gray and blue, but all of them lacked novelty. It wasn't new or seen for the first time. I always believed that GTR should be a subject of admiration and aspiration which people want to mimic or copy because during uh, the first generation Hakosuka and Ken and Mary GTR were known for the distinctive over fender therefore many customers added over fender or replaced the gill to make it look like but now we have a dedicated body so it's no longer possible to do that. So by providing dedicated color, we wanted to come up with a color which people want to copy like an overhander of the first generation Akosuka and Ken and Mary. And purple used to be a taboo for a body color designing. And purple stands out because it's not a color which normal cars do not offer. However, there is always a risk of becoming flashy and vulgar. That was a problem. So the color GTR should not be fashionable. So we want to express authentic presence. So we reduce the luminosity while producing the color which looked purple in order to express fierceness and strong presence of the car that is authentic. I brought original color that we developed, which you see in the background. You see this? Even in darkness, you see purple color. This is the original color midnight purple is this the real one yes uh, what's the other side not i can't show the other side of course not this is the genuine one it's very expensive by the way oh you have it oh it's available so midnight purple has been evolving and will evolve there's another plate this is the midnight purple 2 which is adopted for r34 Towards the end of the engineering phase, I heard that the multi-flex paint was developed in U.S. I saw it in the media report, and once I saw it, I wanted to apply it on GTR. So I tried to gather information about multi-flex color, but the volume was limited because it was just developed, and it was very expensive. If we want to mass produce it, we, want, we had to buy it all at once, in one lot. Because we are towards the end of the engineering phase, people disagreed because they don't want it to adopt something uncertain and Tamura-san you were in the product planning by tone color at the time uh, pearl white or gray was the maximum that we can do and at 150,000 yen pricing it made a business case at the time so we couldn't we couldn't sell a lot of cars so it was about bonding the volume so 300 it was really in a short while it was sold out and this was the material that we used for the first time in Japan with the midnight purple but we sold with a limited volume 300 units 
it wasn't that we were trying to uh, prevent, pre pretend as if we are hard to get, but we only had a limited supply. I see. And Kawaguchi-san, it was the first time to use the paint in Japan. Were there any challenges you faced in the engineering process? in using a totally new color. Was there any issue or difficulties that you face, like quality assurance, for example? Right. Needless to say, body color, after time, the color shouldn't fade out and it shouldn't peel off. Therefore, when we develop a new color, we spend a lot of time to do a lot of testing to make sure it doesn't peel off or the climate will affect the colors. So, a lot of validations and tests are required. So, unless we pass all the examination, we cannot adopt a new color. Yes, when I joined the company, I was researching paint, so I was also looking at paint, and I went to Okinawa, and under uh, sunlight, we did the testing. We still do that today. Yes, we still do that. We put uh, several hundreds of plates to tested and we also test the adhesive and put a needle on the surface and put a scotch tape to see if the paint peels off and at RR34 as Yamaguchi-san mentioned earlier multiplex color was a totally new material and the volume was very limited so we couldn't use a lot for testing or prototyping so that was another difficulty I see it's a new color, and there are a lot of difficulties and challenges behind it. And Yamaguchi-san, this midnight purple is applied to 2022 model again. Why? What's the reason behind it? Right. In developing the 2022 model year, Tamura-san asked for two things. One is the image color for GT axis and another image color for R. This was his request. And the color for R was this midnight purple. And this midnight purple, as we have done in R34, we use a multi-flex color, which the color changes. But at, unlike the past, we don't have any restrictions on the supply. So we focus on how to express what the designers have in the Mind. The source of design is aurora. Aurora, you see in white night, is an atmospheric phenomenon created by charged particles from the sun striking the upper atmosphere, creating colored lights in the sky. However, on the other hand, the colors of painted objects depend on the way it reflects sunlight. So, and the paint coating, and it was a difficult to reproduce the color. And the coating is less than 10 to 20 microns thick. So it's about one fifth or one fourth of your hair. It's so thin, and it was a challenge to produce an optical change with such a thin coating, which was luminescent. From different angles, if you go around the color, you will find a dynamic illumination like Aurora. Right. This midnight purple. I mean, there are a lot of stories behind midnight purple thanks to this long history of GTR. Let me ask you about the other color. Millennium Jade. And Yamaguchi-san, this color, Millennium Jade, is rare, isn't it? Right. As a sports car, you don't find this kind of mature color, but here again, there's a story behind it. R34 Final Edition. When this was planned, M-Spec which was more focused on riding comfort, which Tamura-san likes, was engineered. And we look for a mature color which expresses this riding comfort. And I always thought that sports cars are all about blue and red, but we look for some color that express maturity. And as a Japanese, we are very sensitive to some specific colors. We look for specific colors which co Japanese are sensitive to in particular. We have a phrase in Japanese called Shiju Hyakka Hyaku Nezumi to express colors. It means that there is a wide spectrum of gray and brown colors, a lot of different variations of gray and brown colors in the world. And Japanese people 
have been making distinction among these scholars, even if it's a gray or brown. We made the differences among different shades of gray and brown colors, and we were able to see a minute difference. In this is what I study, and at the end of the day, we came to the grayish green. And green is a difficult color to work with. So sometimes it's too inconspicuous or decent. But with this color panel, we went to Newburgring. In the wood, in the wood, in surrounding by the trees, we wanted to put the name Newburgring. So we wanted to make it stand out even in the greenery. And green within green, I I remember you tell me you have to make the green out of the green. And GT is mature image. That's the color that you have developed. You said. And this millennium jade is the original color, right? 2022 T spec. Uh, we thought about new colors, but we decided to apply the original color of millennium jade, Kawaguchi san. This is a carryover of the original color, so it must have been easier. No, absolutely not. This color is where we had the more difficulty to work with because compared with the old times when we developed R34, modern plants are much more environmental friendly. We have changed the way we build the cars. At the time, the paint shop in particular has a big impact on environment. Thus, we have been making numerous improvements in the facility. It was extremely challenging to reproduce the same color in the different setup because we have a different temperature that we use to bake it. And people thought that this original color it will be easier, but it's a, it's totally different. And we have to reproduce the same color as an original one. And we try to align the color with the original color, so it took more time than developing a totally new color, because in all times we used to adopt volatile solvents. And the sample that you have is the old original one, and the new one is in the hands of Tamura-san. So see, if you look, compare the two, you don't see any difference. But in order to reproduce this car, it was difficult, right? Because. It was difficult to align the color matching of different components. In the micron unit of micron, we reproduce a kai by adjusting a number of factors, including the paint coat in the unit of micron and the paint speed. Right, one gun, uh, one gun blue or bayside blue was available, and because of issue of solvent, we cannot use it as it is today because we are using the solvents and to make that color. The bayside blue. We look at the bees in unit of micron, and we develop a darker blue. So every every time we have a hard time with colors, but it's very environmental friendly, and we were able to reproduce that original color. And I take pride in it. I appreciate it. So Yamaguchi-san, when you talk about color, there. You need support of many people and different processes to come up with this color. Is there any other behind-the-scenes stories that you can share with us? Sure, but in developing body color, usually when we validate colors, we go in the daytime under a ultraviolet ray, and towards the end of the program. Face. We go to destination. If we were the model for U.S., we go to U.S. Or if this car goes to China, we go and verify it in China. But there's another specific evaluation we do for GTR, which is nighttime evaluation. There's no sunlight during night. But for example, we go to the service area under a mercury light. We have to check under the mercury mercury light. Otherwise, it would, we can't make a GTR. Or we. Put the car in the headlights of other vehicles, because unlike the sunlight, the light source is smaller, so the reflection angle will be limited. So how to make it beautiful is what we thought about. So GTR is something special. That's what I can understand from your conversation. In developing a color, I'm sure there are a lot of difficulties. Is there anything that you are paying attention to in particular, being careful about? 
Uh, when I talk about millennial shade, I talk about the sensitivity of colors among Japanese people. So sensitivity differs depending on the nation because it's determined by the nature or the living environment. Japanese people are said to be very sensitive to green colors. And there are multiple expressions for green, such as waka, wakakusa iro, bright green, moegi iro, yellowish green, and wisi iro, colored green. And there are many expressions for green color in Japan. It depends on the environment. I have an impression that people in U.S. are sensitive to beige and brown colors. Maybe it's because brown and beige is the color of Earth. In the past, I came up with a beige color that I was so proud of. When I asked my American colleagues to evaluate the color, they told me that it was a color of grilled meat. Oh, grilled meat. I was so depressed. Uh, what's great, then my colleagues fine-tuned the color that I developed and made it into a beautiful beige color. I was totally impressed. Maybe American people are sensitive to brown and beige because it's the color of Earth. So we are trying to develop a color using the strength. And depending on gender, there are different likes and dislikes, I understand. Right. There are colors you like and the, the, the colors you don't like. And people often talk about differences between male brains and female brains. In fact, there is an interesting survey result. When you see a rainbow, people with male brains tend to distinguish only seven colors, like us. Maybe seven colors. But on the other hand, people with female brains are said to identify double the number or even 30 colors in a rainbow. We are working on color design. We are professionals of color design, which makes me think that we are sensitive to colors, but I'm not sensitive enough to distinguish so many, like 30. So I really admire people with such sensitivity. Right. Uh, on the personal note, in Japan, is there any factor that is particularly important in Japan? There's an interesting data... When Japanese people choose a car or when they purchase a car, body color comes first before anything else. So it comes before anything else like fuel economy, price or styling. So in Japan, the most important factor to consider buying a new car is body color. And the tendency is particularly strong among K-car users. I heard that some customers choose the body color they like and then look for a model that offers the color that they want to buy. So that's what we want to uh, respond or serve, meet the needs. Well, it's, this is a great opportunity to hear the details. It's good to invite Yamaguchi-san, right? He is a professional. So... Listening to you, it will change the way we look at the colors, I hope. You see these colors on the actual car, Kawaguchi-san. I want to hear more about engineering, too. Kawaguchi-san, T-SPEC, it stands for Trend Master, and we talk about color. And there's another aspect of T-SPEC, which is Traction Master. This is more about hardware or dynamic performance. Would you share with us what you paid particular part attention to in the engine 2022 model? Yes, as been said, we offer special version track T-spec for the premium and track grades. As you said, T-specs comes from Traction Master. So T-Specs delivers great traction in any condition. For example, please imagine yourself driving at 200 kilometers per hour and when the car passes over the juncture of the road or uneven surface, if the tires stay afloat for just 0.1 second, the car will move 5.5 meters during the 0.1 second. GTR is about 4.7 meters long, so it means that the car moved more than its overall length. When the tires are float, the car will not respond even if you push on an accelerator or brakes or turn the steering wheel. It's very unstable and not safe. In order for a car to drive fast safely and stop safely, 
the tires should always be in contact with the ground. This is very important. So with the T-Spec, we made another evolution on this front. In fact, when we equipped GTR Nismo model year 2020 with a carbon brake system, and I reduced the weight, unsprung weight, and increase the performance. And with this latest track T-Spec, it adopts the same suspension system, including the carbon brake system like GTR Nismo model year 2020. In addition, we offer carbon roof, carbon trunk lid, and carbon rear spoiler as standard features, which used to be options in the past and reduce the total vehicle weight by about 18 kilograms. Thanks to this, the car enjoys driving stability and braking performance that are equivalent with that of what Nismo users appreciate. Yes, thank you. If so, this track gray T-Spec is equivalent to the latest Nismo model, right? On the other hand, when it comes to premium grade, T-Spec premium grade is updated too? Yes. The premium grade has a T-Spec too, and as I said, it adopts a carbon ceramic grade and the wheel, which is equivalent to Nismo. And thanks to this, we have reduced unsprung weight by about 14 kilograms. And this is enhancing the stability, driving stability and braking performance. But what's different from Nismo is the suspension setup. The Nismo specifications are relatively more for the race racetrack in order to drive fast on a flat surface, the rolling during cornering and the direction, the pitch at the cornering, in order to reduce this, the suspension is harder. On the other hand, when it comes to premium grade, it's for winding road and bumpy roads. When you ride on these bumpy roads or winding roads, the car, it should, it should be on grip with the ground. And this premium T-spec, as I said, because the unsprung weight is much lighter. And on top of this, on the premium tires, we are combining with Nismo's aluminum alloy wheel, although the color is a bit different. Standard car is 9.5J, Nismo is 10J, so there's 0.5J difference, which is about 12 millimeters. By combining a 12.2 millimeters wider wheel, we can increase the rigidity of wheels. So we, this is about maximizing the performance of this car. So it's different from Nismo and it's different from usual premium. It, for Just for the premium T-Spec, we set up the suspension just for this car. As a result, for example, if you are on the junction of the road or on the uneven surface, the vibration, when you are driving, you'll find the vibration, you experience the vibration, but this vibration is reduced by 50%. 15%, sorry, and by increasing the rigidity of the tire on the highway, when you, there, you turn the corners a big radius where you find small bumps on the ground, we can reduce the amount of steering correction by about 50%. The steering correction happens or required even on the clean surface. But the driver, from time to time, it may be conscious, but unconsciously, they try to correct the steering. The steering correction is necessary, but with this, the steering correction largely diff differs depending on the vehicle characteristic specifications. So amount of steering c correction affects driver's fatigue. The less you have to make correction, the less tired you will be. This is mandatory for GTR to enjoy long-distance driving. So this T-Spec is good for drive, excels in driving stability and the riding comfort and the braking performance. All of these aspects are updated on this car, so I hope you can experience it. Yes, thank you. Now, I want to know more about T-Spec, so Yamauchi-san,
tea spec. What is what? Is there anything else you paid a particular attention to? Interior is updated. So let me show you the interior using the real car. This T spec interior. I would like to draw your attention to three things. One is instrumental panel. At the top, you find Alcantara. In Nismo, this has been highly appreciated by the users. You can reduce the reflection of the light, and at the same time, it gives an upscale feeling. So Alcantara is used. And on the seat and on door trim, you find a newly developed green interior material. This green color. I said Japanese people are to, uh, particularly sensitive to green. And as a, this is a green of accent color of purple and green of millennium green is aligned with this car. And another thing that I would like you to look at, in the middle of console, you find a gold emblem. This is dedicated to T-Spec, by the way. And emblem using gold is on the front and rear. And when you open the door, there's a kicking plate, and on the kicking plate, you find a gold motif. This is another characteristic of T-Spec, and there's another location, Kawaguchi-san. Thanks to your support, we made it gold. Okay, where is that? Here you go. Well, we have a lot of gold emblems here, so on the engine cover, this is another gold that you find. Wheel, as I said, wheel is gold, so that we need to align all the colors of T-Spec. And because product planners wanted to make it just for the limited volume, we developed a new color. And this paint, engine room will be very hot. So it's totally different from body color because it will be used in uh, extreme conditions. So we had a hard time to develop this color gold. But please take a look at the total coordination of T-Spec. So that is why we developed this new color. Well, I really appreciate it. But Tamura-san is always smiling and asks for total coordination. And because he is smiling, so I always listen to him. But I thought, oh, this is a big challenge. Later, I noticed that this is a big challenge. And Tamura-san, uh, the gentleman said that this was a request from the product planner. It's not my selfish request. It's product planner's job is to convey what the customers are looking for. Because customers are looking for this. They want midno Midnight Purple and Millennium Jade and Bayside Blue. So we need to share what the customers are saying and the T-Spec users and you are putting the emblem to meet the needs of the T-Spec users and you are the one too, right? Yes, thank you. So even in the hidden aspect, you find some characteristics of T-Spec and we are running out of time. So, so far we talk about trend maker and traction master of T-Spec. Tamara-san, Yamaguchi-san and Kaguchi-san have been providing details. Those who are joining digitally, I hope you, you have learned how attractive this model is. Now we are about to end the talk session, so let me give you some information about the start of sales. GTR and GTR Premium Edition T-Spec and GTR Track Edition engineered by Nismo T-Spec will be sold by lottery. 100 units will be available. We will receive applications during the two weeks starting from tomorrow, September 15th, Wednesday to September 29th, Wednesday. The result of the lottery will be announced in early October via dealerships. Please contact Nissan High Performance Center that handles Nissan GTR for further details. Sato-san, Sato-san. 100 units are available, limited volume. Kawaguchi-san, that's our plan. Can't you increase the number? We wanted to maximize the volume. Yes, uh, we we're working hard. Well, very small number. Uh, you are boasting about the car and you are only offering 100 units because there are a lot of rare components. We are still working hard to maximize the volume. So at least 100 units will be available. 
you are trying you would like to offer as many vehicles as possible so tomorrow from september 15th you have a two week win two weeks window to make the application so that was all for the unveiling event so before we end we would like to ask tamura san to send a message to the viewers please stand up once again Tamura-san, please go ahead with your message. Sure. It's not about this car, but last month in New York, Z was unveiled. And I was in New York and talked to Americans and understood their passion and enthusiasm. We have Fair Lady Z and GTR in our lineup. These sports cars... People tend to focus on sports cars, but Nissan's DNA is not only about sports cars. For example, Aria. In one glimpse, it seems like it's totally different from sports car, but Aria T studied GTR's Traction Master for 4WD. They are studying from GTR, so this GTR and this Z car. These are Nissan's DNA and these are handed over to the rest of the lineup. And this is conveyed as a strong message from Nissan to the customers. We, I'm just a spokesperson and these two gentlemen are supported by many team members to build a car. One person cannot build a car. And this spirit of the team makes these cars a reality so please count on Nissan thank you we would like to conclude the session thank you for watching and joining us